I'm Matthew Embry. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1995, and today I'm symptom-free. The first reaction I had when I was diagnosed was shock. Uh, I mean, I knew something was wrong because I had so many symptoms. Um, what it was, I didn't know. Um, and I, so it, it, was, it was certainly shock. Um, but you know, our family, we didn't stay in that space for very long. You know, we got after it. Uh, and that's how we are today. So I think that, you know, I tell people, don't, you know, it's okay to go to that sad or scary place or the worry place, but set a timer. You know, don't, don't stay there too long. Uh, allow yourself to do it, but then you've got to get climb out of it. Prior to being diagnosed with MS, you know, I lived a relatively, I guess, typical. Uh, I don't like to use the word normal because I don't necessarily believe in anyone being normal. Um, but it was, a, you know, I was a, a young athlete. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. Um, didn't have any other, you know, major health concerns um, before that. And, you know, my future was ahead of me. Well, it was a major shock. It was just, I cannot describe how it just, just your whole body just gets blown away. It just, blown away. And then what got me, I assumed they might have drugs or might have something that you do this and you'll be fine. And I was shocked when the doctor said, well, we don't have any idea what causes this. We don't have anything for you. It's just you're on your own. So as soon as they said that, I said, well, we've got to do something on our own now. We've got to, it's up to us. I remember just being a little boy waking up and just wanting to get out there and get after it. Uh, but I think, you know, my diagnosis, and I, I say this now, w was a gift uh, in many ways. Um, and, and for me, it, it really accelerated um, that, you know, that want to really take advantage of life and take advantage of what my body can do here on earth um, and, and to try to make the best life possible. Um, and I think that that's a perspective I have today. Um, it's, you know, when you, when you start seeing you know, how maybe bad life can get, whether that be death or serious disability or illness or however the individual wants to see that, you, you see that, you know, when you wake up and you're not like that and you can live, you get after it. And I think that's been incredible because it's, it's been, it motivates me on a day-to-day -day basis. I can tell it impacts the people around me and now we're able to share that journey with people all over the world and hopefully that helps them. Uh, from my perspective, the, the best way to deal with anything is to find out the cause. Whatever's the problem, the trouble, what is the cause of that problem, and then deal with the causal factors. Yeah, I mean, after I was diagnosed in 1995, we made significant uh, changes. And, you know, I was really, lucky that my you know my dad was a research uh, research scientist and he he went to the medical library and, and did the work and you know came back and you know his conclusion was that we had to take major changes in, in regards to my nutrition if you really go after things you can often find enough information to come up with a good solution and, but I've always believed in that. I've always believed in that was why we do science. At that time, the journals were not on, online. Like now, it's so fantastic. You can get yeah. any paper you want just by going online. Well, I had to spend many hours in the med library and copying you know, various papers. And, but that was fine. That's what I had done always in my science. You know, that was over 26 years ago now. Um, that I really changed my diet, uh, my lifestyle, uh, now using high dose vitamin D, regular vigorous exercise, uh, mindfulness, and you know, that equation uh, has put me where I am today. So it's, it's just important to be able to put the information out there. And it's hard for people to know what to trust because there's a lot of nonsense out there. That's what amazed me of all the nonsense that was actually out there and you think and so I, I I understand why people 
do only want to go to their doctor because they feel, okay, that's going to be the only information I can trust. And I understand that. But there is other information out there that you can trust. We set up our first website of the charity in 1996. We had the website before the MS Society had a website. We were right, right on top of it as soon as you, we were doing everything you possibly could on the, on the internet at that time because I knew that was the best way to get the word out there. Provide people with the information that they can make an informed choice of what they want to do with their MS. Yeah. And multiple sclerosis is the flashpoint, but I really think that the story is for pretty much anybody dealing with any illness because it's really about learning the ability to advocate for oneself. Um, I, I think. You know, sometimes we, we, we can live in a world where we think help is on the way and that the system is going to help us. And that's true to an extent. There, there's, there's certainly, there's no question, people will reach out and help you. But largely, it's on the individual. Um, and so you, you really have to do the work and with the people around you to get after your own health. And I think what we try to demonstrate is that the steps to do that have to be real world steps and action for people. Um, so that's nutrition, that's exercise, that's mindfulness, it's vitamin D and supplements. But each of those things uh, allow someone to start taking control of their own health. Uh, so for people to achieve optimal health or to overcome illness, um, it's going to be a combination of obviously dealing with medical professionals, but there's also a huge accountability on the person who's been diagnosed with something, whether it be MS or anything, uh, to pursue that optimal health. Yeah, well, at f first I thought, you know, well, I, that I got all this information, I'll share it with the MS Society and they'd be very happy and to share it with their members. I thought that, that would be one way to channel it, but I. I was absolutely shocked that they were not interested at all. And then I realized that just there is not a strong interest in non-drug therapies. That's, and I, I feel fine about that. That's what the medical pharmaceutical complex does. So I do have a real problem with any doctors, scientists, charities, receiving money from a company like a drug company that has a monetary interest in what you put out there. So that, that does bother me as a scientist, that you cannot do good scientists if you're compromised by money. You know, I get messages, not daily, but you know, at least three, four times a week of people whose lives have been impacted by the documentary and the website and the work my dad has done, the work my mother has done, uh, and the work that we're, we're continuing to do today. The most dramatic that ever happened to me, you know, in, in real life is I had gone to an MS support group and I'd given a, a, just a in very informal talk to people. And then about a year and a half, two years later, I was at a farmer's market and this woman came up to me and she's like, hey, look at me. And I had no idea who it was, but it was a woman from there who was once using a walker. She lost all this weight and she was walking. She didn't, she, she didn't have a walker anymore. I, I was stunned. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And you know, since she walked off on her way and you know, my, you know, my family was there and, I, you know, I, and that was probably the most dramatic real world. But I certainly get photos sent to me and, and emails and messages and, and my dad, I think it's something the same. and I'm really proud of him that how he's now gone out and been such an ambassador for the whole c concepts. He's, he's really, like we were trying, but we didn't get very far. And when Matthew got involved, then that was a game changer for our goal of getting the information out there. So I was always so impressed and amazed at his ability to know the best ways of doing things and well, we got to do this, we should do that. Okay, and it, and it almost always 
he was right. <laughs> yeah. The good life is enjoying the now. And I think if you can really capture the now and see the beauty in what's in front of you, what's manifesting right in front of you in the moment, and that's a hard thing to do because the past and the future will pull you, you know, your mind and distract you. But if you can exist in that space and, and if your actions and your words, if they're positive and they're building a beautiful world, that's just going to continue. And every human being has access and the ability to do that right now. So when you're watching this interview, you can make the choice right now to see it as something beautiful and your computer, whatever, however you're watching it as a beautiful experience. And then keep going. <laughs>